Hello and welcome to another highly questionable week. We're refreshed around here. This is Mina Kimes. What do you like on the show today, Mina? I like Poppy's tan. He looks great. Wow. Okay, very good. Dale, Poppy. What the hell thought the Lakers building around LeBron? What kind of monstrosity have the Golden State Warriors built? When you are looking at the Lakers, they just got LeBron James, and you're like, I feel like they're losing free agency because they got Lance Stevenson, they got JaVale McGee, they got Ray John Rondo, and you're looking at it and saying, wait a minute, is the plan of the Lakers to find three guys instead of one who are likely to forget the score at the end of a finals game? But... LeBron is going to take whoever he has into winning. These guys, too. You're about to find out how good Brandon Ingram is. That young team was good before, was getting good improving, and now he's going to make it strong. It doesn't matter who's around him. As best as I can tell, the Lakers' plan to fight the Warriors is to put together a team of conscientious objectors, which is to say a bunch of guys who can't and won't shoot. Now, this runs counter to everything we've heard about LeBron for years, which is he likes to surround himself with shooters. But they insist that actually LeBron is changing. He's evolving. He wants to play more in the post. He wants to create less, which makes sense. What makes less sense is overpaying a bunch of misfits to recreate real-world Los Angeles. Now, I understand that most of these guys are on one-year contracts, but it's going to be a really weird year in L.A. It's going to be a lot of fun, though, for LeBron as he gets into L.A. and starts cashing in on his brand and learns at the knee of Magic Johnson what it is to be a businessman pioneer who owns that city. As people around there are defacing, Kobe fans are defacing LeBron because he's coming here. LeBron is bigger than Kobe, and he wants to be what Magic has already become in business. He could do it by learning for a year at a mentor's knee while doing a bunch of movies and having executive production credits all around Hollywood. You know, you know the reason that he got Javel McGee? He couldn't beat Javel McGee, you know, he was with the Golden State Warriors, so he couldn't beat him, you know, so he said, I mean, I, at least you're not know, going to have him on my side this time, you know. The same thing with Lance Stevenson. He was also scared of Lance Stevenson, blowing on his ear, you know, and he was uh, just, he just scared of those two guys. So now they are his uh, teammates. Can you believe that? These two guys are his teammates. Hard to believe. Yeah, that's why it was the first question off of vacation. <laughs> Should the Lakers give up Brandon Ingram to get Kawhi Leonard? No, why would you start giving up? Oh, she wants to make that <laughs> trade right now. The reason that I don't is because you don't have to make that trade now. You can wait for a year, as it appears that LeBron is doing anyway with all of these signings. In a year, maybe you can get Kawhi Leonard for free instead of trading a piece in Brandon Ingram's that LeBron James is going to make very much better as he grows. I don't know. I think it's kind of a big risk to wait for a couple of reasons. One, Kawhi Leonard, who knows what that guy's thinking, could easily pull a Paul George and change his mind and not go to Los Angeles in a year. And number two, LeBron James turns 34 this year. When I turn 32, I can no longer move my head all the way to the right. Why are we assuming that LeBron is going to be the same guy in 2020 and 2021? If I'm the Lakers, I move now while he's still in his prime to get Kawhi. All fair, but she just compared her frame to LeBron James, the most indestructible athlete of our time. That's something that just happened on national television. That's okay, Mina. At my age, you know, I have to go to the bathroom about 11 to 12 times an hour, you know what I mean? So what can I tell you? Those are limitations we got, you know, we get old, that's all. It does, it does happen. LeBron is going to be going to the bathroom a lot in the second year of this contract. He's just like us. I'm not kidding about the neck. Are you more or less interested in basketball now that Boogie is a warrior? This is funny to look at in retrospect. Six games ago with the Warriors, we were actually legitimately wondering if Chris Paul were healthy, if they were going to lose. And we wouldn't be talking about how unfair this is that they just swept the Cavs. But now they add Boogie Cousins, and everybody hyperventilates in a way that seems to forget that guys this size with Achilles injuries never look like they did before. There is no precedent for someone coming back from this injury and looking like anything other than Elton Brand late in his career. So you shouldn't be any more or less excited by this than you were by, hey, the Warriors were already better than everybody. They can take this kind of gamble. Yeah, I think the Warriors' chances of winning the championship just went from 99% to 99.5%. Because Dan is right. We don't know what Boogie's going to look like when he comes back. A guy of his size and talent rebounding fully from this sort of injury is basically unprecedented. But what if it happens? The thing about the Warriors is that they already have five of the six Infinity Stones. It doesn't matter if he fails. They're already going to win this thing. And if he succeeds, they can bet on that very, very, very tiny upside because there's no downside for them at this point. Uh, again, uh, Swaggy P and JaVale McGee are champions in this league. They can add anybody and make them a champion. 
Well, I don't know. I think that he got a very big shoe to fill now. You know, I mean, Javel Magui and Chacha, are you kidding me? Those guys that make the difference in that roster, you know? Every time they needed somebody to go out there and decide the game, there was Chacha or Javel coming out. I don't know if Boogie can do that. You know, Boogie, uh, he's hurt, you know, and he's going to be very limited in what he can do. So I don't think that that was a good move on the side of the Warriors. I'm telling you, you should have kept Javel and Chacha. That's all I got to say. Uh, it could have gone on. <laughs> Would Melo make the Rockets better or worse? We are still talking about Melo around here. For 10 years, we've been talking about Melo and what he's going to do with his contracts and where he's going to play. And Melo has been largely a laughing stock, I believe, a little unfairly maligned before this incarnation of Melo, which is not in shape Melo. It is not Melo from seven years ago. The idea that he could be a third option anywhere isn't something that should give you confidence when where he just was, he couldn't be a third option. So the answer to this question depends on the time frame. Would the Rockets be worse with Melo than they were last year? Yeah. But they already lost Trevor Ariza. They have a hole at small forward. So now we're going to ask, would they be worse with Melo or nothing? Like, the Rockets have to decide, would they rather have Carmelo Anthony or a 20% off coupon to Bed Bath & Beyond? It's actually kind of a difficult question because we're talking about a guy who finished with a net rating of minus 14.3 in the postseason. A guy who refused to come off the bench. A guy who might have chased Mike D'Antoni, potentially his coach in this scenario, out of town. If I'm Houston, I might want to take that coupon. I forgot all about that. D'Antoni told everybody at through Sports Illustrated, Mello made me quit. I'd forgotten about that. Are you okay? Why are you praying? Oh, Bobby? man, I'm just praying. I'm praying that he doesn't come to the heat. <laughs> no, no, stay away from the heat. Lord, That's stay right. Away. Stay away from the heat. Don't come down here, Melo. Stay away from it. It's, it's a uh, prayer throughout our I land know, right now. In many cities. Know, that, know, that, you know, stay away from it. How should Rob Manfred feel about the Weaver? And Aaron Josh passing on the home run derby. He loves to call Giancarlo Stanton the whiffer. Really, we're exploring the feelings of Rob Manfred. That's what I'm doing with my journalism career. These two guys don't want to participate in this thing because in Aaron Judge's case, his season went to hell after doing the home run derby. And Giancarlo Stanton is saying that he doesn't want to deal with it either. He's done it before. It's not interesting to him. And when you take those two guys out of the home run derby, you've just made it so that I don't want to watch the home run derby. Nobody will watch the home run derby, but a lot of people are going to watch the Yankees make a deep playoff run. So Rob Manfred, he can soothe his pain by thinking of the money they're going to make if that team, which has the biggest fan base in America, goes deep. And in order for them to do that, Aaron Judge, who, as Dan pointed out, slumped heavily after the derby last year, needs to keep up. He's hit over 300 over the last 30 days. It's looking pretty good for them. And I understand from a baseball perspective why neither of these guys want to do it, even if it means they're going to get dunked on by this old man for the next few weeks. Well, you know why the Weaver does not want to participate in the home run derby? Why? Well, he's afraid that he'll be the only one striking out. Oh, you know what I mean? That's there it, is. you know? He's going to get up That's there right. and swing. In the home and there it is again, my father again waving a flag in a marching band for some reason. Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Shiblani goes this side of right. the All right, you got to open it. Oh. Back across, no. Oh. Uh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Come on. Right, right there. Right there buddy. It's right there. It's right there. Oh! oh. oh. Tonight on Sports Center after PTI, the latest NBA buzz surrounding Carmelo, Capella, and Marcus Smart. Plus, inside Tebow's breakout baseball season, could he be on his way to the bigs? Tony Collins and I will see at 6 Eastern after PTI. Time to play the game that is mentally still on vacation. Do you question? You give us topics and events, we question him. Do you question if Joey Votto should be offended? Joey Votto plays for the Cincinnati Reds. Still, that should offend him. But he is outside of Wrigley Field here, and he's trying to get in through security, but he's not dressed like a baseball player. Let's go, Votto. And he looks about 40 pounds lighter than when he was hitting 40 home runs. Oh, he doesn't recognize him. Hey, hold on. Joey Votto, that's the man. Hey. MVP, Joey. A great card to pull. Um, uh... <laughs> you gotta learn that name, man. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a middle school teacher. Like, he did, to that guy's credit, he does not look like a professional I, I baseball I know, player. but I am jealous of Joey Votto because what I want to say is my ID right here. Here's my ID. <laughs> so the Cubs, I wouldn't uh, let uh, Joey Votto in, but they let this guy on the field? What guy on the field? Who? Look at that. 
Oh, Will Bond. That's right. Wait a minute. How did he get past security and impersonating someone who knows how to dress? Do you question if the defense deserves credit for this? Okay, we do not have the rights to World Cup soccer, so we can't show you anything from the World Cup, a big sporting event that the international globe is interested in. So we go out to Charleston against North Carolina with our soccer coverage. Mm. Open on the far side is Blanco. Shiblani goes this side All right. to Rios. All right, got to open. Oh. Back across. No. Oh. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Right, right there. Right there Somebody buddy. score. It's right there. It's right there. Oh, oh, wow, it is shocking that we are not in the World Cup. <laughs> wow, there it is. Oh, uh, game over. Uh, American soccer hopes that's how we play soccer. Oh, the goalpost stopped like three shots. Good God, the odds of that. He's just diving to get in front of it. <laughs> oh, that, that, the final indignities there through the legs. Can I look at this one more time? Just where did the goalkeeper, at any point, did the goalkeeper touch the ball with anything other than his butt? Is that something that just happened? Oh. Nope. No, nope. not yet. Not nope. yet. Still, nope. the keeper's done nothing. Nope. Keeper's just wandering around. <laughs> what is Let's he see. Doing? No, keeper. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. is. Oh, the butt right. save. Professional keeper. That is what is going to happen if Melo were to play soccer. Precisely that. Really, really, keep shooting and missing. Really, keep shooting and missing. Shooting keep shooting and missing. Keep shooting and missing. <laughs> Melo, that seems unfair. Do you question playing Dutch ball with Tom Brady's niece? This is great here. Family time with the Brady's is very competitive. His niece Maya is a softball player of some repute. Let's check in with this family dodgeball game. There's Brady. Brady's playing in the game, and Maya is calmly avoiding oh. everyone oh. until wow. that's right. She unleashes fire yeah. and then disgust. <laughs> oh, and Brady gets thrilled. Right, and Maya doesn't have wow. time for Brady anymore because she's going to hit some little kid <laughs> right in the face. <gasps> Good God, she is throwing lightning wow. bolts at shirtless Boom. little kids. Imagine that little kid shirtless getting hit in the face by some of that. Do you know who is jealous about her arm? Who's yeah. that? Andrew Locke. That's it. <laughs> I mean, it's a good joke. It's just, the, yeah. yeah, it's a good joke. Yeah. Oh, this throwing that high school football 10 yards. Do you know who's also jealous about her arm? Who's that? Alex Smith. <laughs> That's another good joke. Yes, Alex Smith right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is terrible. Yeah. Uh, no interceptions, though. Do you know who is not jealous of her arm? This girl. Oh. <laughs> not jealous. Not jealous of her arm. Oh, I know this one. No! Oh, that's right. She's not jealous. That's right. Oh, and more classic. Style. Wow. Yeah. Good classic. God. Oh, my God. She's just drilling abdomen. Oh, the girl is dog. Do you know who else is jealous of her arm? <laughs> who, Dad? Who? 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 Look at this. Oh, there it is. Mike oh, Wilbon. That's we right. Go. Mike Wilbon's oh, got no arm. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Once again. Mm. Do you question whether Travis Pastrana helped or hurt Evil Knievel's reputation? I like this guy. He is an adrenaline junkie. He lives life big. X Games, Nitro Games. And he is trying to do something here that not even Daredevil, Evil Knievel could achieve. This is a failed Evil Knievel jump. I'm taking from the question that it didn't go well. So evil failed at this. Evil failed at this, so that was what he was proving, that he could be braver than evil. He did it! Easily he did it. Yeah, this doesn't Wait, help Evil can Evil's reputation. He did that with the greatest of ease. Evil, wait a minute. Evil was kind of overrated. So let's just say it right now. Yeah. Like, that was easy. He's spinning in his grave three times over a pit of fire. Compared to the great Travis Pastrana, who did that very easily. Oh, I love Pastrami sandwich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite. If you go to New York, any daily yeah, body, I'm telling you, that's why right. I eat them up like nothing, three, four at the time. Okay, you know? three, four at a time. Ooh, that's ooh, good stuff. You know what I mean? He's my guy, Pastrami. Oh, <laughs> Pastrami's his guy. Time to play the game that gets away with everything. See?
Oh, no. You tell us what to watch on television tonight. He's always going to be intrigued. <laughs> Right now on ESPN2 and ESPNU, the NBA Summer League. Do the Knicks have something to be excited about here? Kevin Knox, they want something to be excited about because who plays for the Knicks and Phil Jackson ruined it. Is this the thing to be excited about for the New York Knicks? Still at Chris Depps. Over here. Okay, yeah, that was, just, uh, that was just a dunk. I was very enthusiastic about that, but it's just okay. <laughs> All right, Kevin Knox, the best Knicks highlight in four years. Mina, are you intrigued? Yes, based on a few games of Summer League, I now know that the Knicks are saved. Jaron Jackson is the best player in NBA history, and Trey Young might be the worst. I mean, what happened to Trey Young here? He barely get the ball over half court. Yikes. Yeah, it looked physically wow. overmatched, not like Trey Steph Curry at up. all. The school for a year and then come out. The Hawks are doomed. It's over. Lewis lost the handle. Trey Young floater. Woof! Yeah, that's not good. Okay, yeah, that last one was really bad. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, you know, I'm so happy for the Knicks fan. You know, that was uh, that was the best thing of next season for you. You're not going to see anything better than that. So might as well enjoy it now. Don't miss him, you know what I mean? Because that's it for you guys. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Summer League. It's the best it's gonna get. Tomorrow on Fox, the World Cup semifinal, France and Belgium. Yeah, all things cop are interesting here in Miami. We are number one, English and Spanish of, in America, how we love this sport. But that's not what we're going to check in with here. We're going to check in with making fun of Neymar, a national pastime in many countries that hate Brazil. Let's make fun of Neym Neymar with some Mexican fans. <laughs> Flopping <laughs> yeah, there galore. There's Neymar challenge. It's a roll off. Yes. Uh, Neymar spent 14 minutes chronicled on the grass during the World Cup doing things like this. 14 total minutes. <laughs> that guy's still going. That has to be terrible when you're finished with it. Uh, Mina, are you intrigued? Yes. So I've been watching a lot of the World Cup at home with my dog Lenny. He's been watching a lot of Neymar and recently got him to do this. Roll over. <laughs> hey! Hey! Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. You know, I wish my dog would do something like that. You know, he does is just eat, 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 and sleep, 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 just like you. You know what oh, I mean? Yes, I wish you would do the same right. thing. You know okay. what I mean? Just eat, like eat, eat, and sleep, right, sleep, right. sleep. Right. sleep. Right. I'm about to give up on them, right. the two of them. Right, we're exactly hmm. alike. At least I don't pee in the house like he does. But can you roll over? Not so well. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> on E, very cavalier. Oh, yes, because you know who her husband is. Her husband is Jay Cutler, who has made profound indifference an art form. I have not seen what this is here, but it's got to be profound indifference. I felt pretty comfortable. Oh, I know you did. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's going to be great, because being married to him is exactly as you imagine being married to him would look like. Mina, are you intrigued? I love him so yeah. much. He's a quarterback with the personality of a DMV worker and the body of a DMV worker. There will never be another Jay Cutler. <laughs> Unbelievable. Beloved lazy. It's weird. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. At least Jay was nice enough to put his clothes on for the TV show. Oh, you right. know what I mean? That's Thank something. There, there we go. There we go. And she said, uh, yeah. the body of a DMV worker. <laughs> Look at there it is. Drink oh, it in. Oh, I miss him so much. Almost as much as defenses in the NFL. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. What are you doing, where, Poppy? Where are you going? I'm going to reenact the photo. <laughs> oh, no, don't. Oh, no. Everybody, everybody.